Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create white skies in Lightroom and why images that have really, really horrible skies can look absolutely awesome if you know what to do with them. Now, before we get started with this video, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to do. What I'm going to do is take an image like this and convert it to something like this. Now, the significance of this conversion is not only am I converting to black and white, but I'm also making sure that the sky is going to white. Here's another example here. This is the original image, and here is what we've done with it, making sure, again, that the sky is going to white. Here's another example. Now this effect is something that I first saw in some images that Scott Kelby had shot in Rome, and he was shooting to get white skies on days when the skies weren't particularly good. And I looked at that video and thought, well, what happens if you've already got the photos and you want to get a really interesting effect from them? So this is a video tutorial on creating this effect in Lightroom. So I'm assuming that you're starting work with images that have lackluster skies or just plain blue skies. This image has a blue sky, and what we're going to do is to actually convert that to white. So now you've seen what we're aiming to do. Let's get started. I'm going to start with this image because it's probably the most challenging of them. Let's just make a virtual copy before we start so that we've got the original always to go back to. I'm going into the Develop module. Let's just hide this panel here, and let's hide this panel. So I'm going to start with just some basic adjustments to this image, because I want to make sure that I start with a good image. I want to bring a bit of detail out of the shadows, because a lot of this building is in shadow. I'm going to make sure that I have a white and a black point by holding Alt or Option, and then just drag on the white slider, just making sure I'm pretty close to having some white pixels and so that I have some black pixels as well. This is going to be a much crunchier and more interesting black and white if there's a bit of clarity applied to the image, because that's going to give us a bit more crispness throughout the building. I think I really still need to pull these shadows up a little bit here, and perhaps even increase the exposure a little bit. And now let's go to black and white. So I'm going to click here to convert the image to black and white. And I'm also going to crop it to just get rid of this element in the corner, as that's not really helping the image, and click Done. Now, right now the sky is gray. It's not white. But we can do something about that by adjusting the blue slider here. So I'm just going to drag the blue slider over so that we're getting some lighter colors in the blue areas. We're still not white, but we're going to deal with that in just a minute. While we're here in the black and white panel, we can adjust how our black and white looks, because these sliders here allow us to take any color in the underlying image to black or white. So there's quite a bit of red in this image, so we can make the red areas darker or lighter, depending on how we drag the red slider. So I want quite a bit of darkness through this area of the image. If there's red, there's likely to be orange. So again, I'm going to look for an interesting value for the orange colors in the image. And yellow, well, yes, there's a likelihood of some yellow here too. It's mainly in this area here. Green. Given this image, probably not a lot of green. Aqua, a little bit. And we're going to leave blue wound all the way up to nearly 100, and then look at purple and magenta. And we're just here looking to fine tune the black and white portion of the image, ignoring the sky. Now, as I said, the sky is still a bit gray, so let's grab the adjustment brush. Now, I want quite a big brush, and I want a small feather. So this is a pretty good setting for this brush right now. And because I want to just get the sky, then I'm going to make sure that Auto Mask is turned on, and that Flow and Density are 100. I'm going to click to pin the adjustment brush down here. Now, you can see my adjustment brush is set to an increased exposure. Now, you can either do this before you make the selection or afterwards. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that you pin the adjustment brush down in the sky area, and you then start painting over the sky. 
Now what I need to do is to make sure that that cross in the middle of my adjustment brush is always placed over sky area and never over the buildings because with auto mask turned on this is going to make it really really simple for me to select the sky provided I just paint with that X mark over sky and never over the building. Now to check my mask I can press the O key you can see that I've got a really good mask here because we had a very obvious sky and I've set this brush to auto masking. I think I've got a little bit of pink in here that I didn't mean to so let's go to the eraser. I'm going to size the eraser right down. I'm just going to erase the mask where it seems like I might have got a little bit in the building windows but apart from that really good mask. I'm going to press the letter O again to hide the mask. And I'm just going to experiment with exposure values that are going to whiten that sky nicely. And I really think about one and a half stops is a good setting for that. So I'll click done. And there's our first image that we have managed to convert to a white sky. This is the before. The sky is really quite dark in this image but look we've been able to blow it out. And I think that these images, particularly when things are photographed on an angle, if these were printed in black and white and framed that they're going to look really, really good on a wall. And this effect works really particularly well on architectural images. Let's go and have a look at this one. Again, we've got an okay sky, but it's not anything great. But you can see that there is actually some detail in the sky. So let's just go and make a virtual copy and let's adjust this one. I think that these images look particularly good as square images. So if you want to, you could crop them to square or perhaps nearly square. I'll click done. I'm going to make sure I have a good starting point for this image. So the exposure is looking pretty good. The contrast is not bad. Let's just look and see what happens when we bring highlights down. Well, it's only working in the sky, so I'm not really going to work on highlights except perhaps to take them up a little bit to try and get rid of a lot of the sky. Shadows, well, I can get a bit of bridge detail by increasing the shadows. I want to adjust the whites and blacks. Alt or Option with the white slider to make sure I'm getting some whites and Alt or Option with the black slider dragging in the negative or the left direction to make sure I get some blacks. Again, if we want this a little bit crunchy, increase clarity. Now let's go to our black and white. We've converted it to black and white and again we're looking at taking the blue all the way to the positive 100 sort of area to make sure that we're getting nice white sky. And then the rest of the colors we can work with. There's some red and orange in these buildings so we can make the buildings darker or lighter according to our preference. Wherever there's greenery in the image you'll probably also be looking at yellow. We're picking up some of the tree here is in the yellow area as well as in the green area. And again we'll look at purple and magenta. We just don't want to touch that blue. The blue is not an option to be adjusting differently with this effect. Now when I've finished up here I probably just want to check my highlight clipping. So I do appear to have some highlight clipping here when I click on this indicator here which means I can probably back off my blue a little bit and perhaps also back off my exposure or highlights here just to get rid of that so that I get some just not quite white pixels in the sky there. But so I've got a sort of even color in the sky. It's pretty evenly white, but we're not blowing out those pixels. So this is an effect that I think that you'll like and it certainly works really, really well for architectural images in particular when you've got lackluster skies. If you don't have cracking great skies behind your architecture, consider converting the skies to white and just see if that gives you an interesting look for your images. I love it and I hope that you do too. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.